Before we dig deeper into the driver class for this program, let's take up the topic of how one goes about compiling a Java application. In its simplest form, a Java application can be compiled by entering the command that you see here at the command prompt. However, life is often somewhat more complicated. It is often necessary to specify the paths to various library files on the command line when compiling the application. In that case, the simple form given earlier is not sufficient. When a Java application is successfully compiled, it will produce one or more output files with an extension of .class. In the, for the application that we are going to examine in this lesson, one of those output files will be named prob01.class. You may already be aware that the execution of C and C++ programs begins and ends in a function named main. The execution of a Java application begins and ends in a method named main. In its simplest form, a Java application can be executed by entering the command that you see below at the command prompt. Once again, however, it is often necessary to specify the paths to various library files on the command line when executing the application. Once again, in that case, the simple form is not sufficient. This application can be compiled and executed on my machine by entering the two commands that you see on the right hand side of your screen at the command prompt. Note that artificial line breaks were inserted into these commands to make them fit into this narrow publication format. In fact, each command must be entered on the command line as a single string of text with no line breaks. The JVAC portion of the first command on the right hand side of your screen causes the Java compiler to run. The Java portion of the second command causes the Java virtual machine to run. The prob01.java and prob01 items that you see in the two commands cause the specify I'm sorry specify the files being operated on by the compiler and the virtual machine respectively in other words the compiler operates on the file named prob01.java while the virtual machine operates on the file named prob01 with an implied dot class extension. So what is the name of the Java compiler program? Well the answer is that the Java compiler is a file named javac.exe. What is the name of the Java Virtual Machine program? The answer is that 
it is a file named java.exe. In both cases, on the right side of your screen, the dash cp indicates that a class path follows. A class path consists of one or more path specifications separated by semicolon characters. The purpose of the class path is to tell the compiler and the virtual machine where to look for previously compiled class files that the application needs in order to successfully compile and execute. What does a class path look like? The answer is that a class, class path consists of one or more path specifications separated by semicolon characters. Each of the class paths on the right hand side of your screen consists of two paths separated by a semicolon. Note the period that I have highlighted on the right hand side of your screen immediately head ahead of the semicolon. This period says to search the current folder first. It is very important that you include this period whenever you need to include a class path. Otherwise, you may have difficulties compiling and running your application. The highlighted text following the first semicolon is the absolute path to the folder containing the class files that make up Barb Erickson's class library on my machine. The location of that folder will probably be different on your machine and is definitely different in the ACC labs at Northridge. So here's another question. What is the purpose of a class path? The answer is that the purpose of a class path is to tell the compiler and the virtual machine where to look for previously compiled class files that the application needs in order to successfully compile and execute the program.